Welcome to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV. And happy no rose to all our viewers from all of us here at Press TV. We are here for Comment now for the next hour or so. Comment is the big conversation. It can be the great debate, but only if you join in. That's why, above all, I need your telephone calls on 442086014555. You call us, we'll call you back, establish a clear line. And remember, if you get on the TV with me, your TV has to be down at zero, or I'll have to pass swiftly on because no one will understand either of us. You can also SMS the show on 447800008066, or you can email me at comment at presstv.co.uk. Well, the Cold War that John McCain and John Kerry and Barack Obama want to drag us back into just got a little chillier as President Obama and the White House announced a raft of new sanctions against the Russian Federation and the European Union foreign ministers arrived in Brussels, that uh, center of freedom and liberty, uh, to plan ever more draconian action against Russia. And the proximate cause, of course, is the situation in Crimea. Though that's not the real cause. The real cause is Western concern about the rise of new power in the world, about the fact that Russia has dragged itself off its knees to which it was reduced in the Yeltsin era and has, through its democratically elected government, given the Russian people back a great deal of their self-respect and a good deal, but not yet enough, of the wealth that was stolen from Russia during the Yeltsin period. And the plutocrats and uh, uh, oligarchs that the Western countries are uh, threatening now with the purloining of their bank balances held in Western banks, more fool them for having their wealth in Western banks. President Putin told them more than a year ago to bring their wealth home. It shouldn't be in foreign banks, shouldn't be in foreign football teams, shouldn't be being invested in expensive property in foreign locales. So, frankly, if the Western countries steal their wealth, well, number one, the Western countries will be showing themselves as thieves, and number two, well, it shouldn't have been here in the first place. That's my point of view. I want to hear yours. But let's go back to the proximate cause. I want to ask you to compare certain areas of the world and certain circumstances. At the end of the Kosovan War, the NATO bombardment of Yugoslavia, Kosovo remained a part of the Republic of Serbia. Kosovo has unilaterally, illegally, and out with the charter of the United Nations, declared itself an independent state. And it has been recognized as an independent state by 110 countries in the world. And who do you think are included in the 110 countries? Well, most of the countries who are now threatening Russia with sanctions. This is absurd, double standards to the point of hilarity. One country declares itself independent and you rush to recognize it. Another country, Crimea, democratically decides in a plebiscite of all of its people to leave the Ukrainian state of which it was formerly uh, an autonomous republic and join Russia and that becomes the cause for war and confrontation. There are many other comparisons I can give. I will do later in the course of this debate. The second topic we are discussing is Palestinian deaths, which are now occurring amongst a very small population. The number of Palestinian people living in the West Bank, Gaza, and occupied Jerusalem is very, very small. It's less than five million. But every single day, Palestinians are being killed by the Zionist apartheid state. And the world doesn't even report it. 
Never mind do anything about it. Now, Palestine, West Bank, Gaza, occupied Jerusalem, has the same population as Scotland. Can you imagine if every day a foreign occupier was killing people in Scotland every single day, as well as starving them, as well as building illegal settlements upon their land, as well as throttling them, torturing them, imprisoning them in huge numbers for political offenses. Can you imagine the cause celebra that that would be in the world? And yet, it's happening to Palestinians every day, and Europe doesn't do a thing about it. On the contrary, Europe treats the criminal as if it were the victim, and treats the victims as if they were the criminals. And that's adding considerable insult to very considerable injury. The teams from Israel participate in the European football championships. They even get to sing in the Eurovision Song Contest, though maybe that's some kind of punishment, but it definitely doesn't fit the crime. The European Union, which is busy lecturing Russia over Crimea, where not a life was lost at the hands of any Russian, are doing nothing, indeed helping, the ongoing attrition, massacre and repression of the Palestinian people. Discuss. And lastly, we have unfortunately seen the passing from this life of the very great and right honorable Tony Benn. I was with him for 40 years and I was by his side during some of his most epic battles, particularly his struggle to win the leadership of the Labour Party and make it a real Labour Party, a socialist party that would transform the lives of working people. As the Vice President of the Stop the War Coalition, I have been marching behind him as President of our coalition from the very first day. Tony Benn was the greatest Prime Minister that Britain never had, the greatest leader that the Labour Party never had. To quote Mr. William Shakespeare, he was a man, take him for all and all, we shall not look upon his like again. The Right Honourable Tony Benn, I salute you. Over to you, what's your point of view on any of these three matters? We're taking calls from all over the world. And the first of those is Shoker, who is in London. Shoker, welcome to the show, my friend. Good evening, good evening. First of all, let me give my condolences to Tony Benn and his family. Great icon, that's a great icon. Thank you so much, thank you. It's a very great and, loss uh, for us. I his work, yeah. He, he was a great man. Yes, And indeed. second of all, I have got comment about Israel. Total sanction, total boycott until Israel comes to term. One man, one vote, equal rights for the Jews, for the Muslims, for the Christians, for anybody. Land of holy. And the, my question is uh, about Russia. Do you think is, uh, when the West interfered this much in the Russian uh, backyard, do you think that the consequences is end up to be another Cold War? Thank you very much. Well, I, mean, uh, I, I, I didn't hear all of that terribly clearly. Forgive me, Shoker, uh, and thank you for your condolences for the uh, death of Mr. Ben. May God have mercy upon his soul. Uh, but I did hear that you mentioned Russia and the Cold War. And the Cold War is pretty serious now. If you ban the chief of staff of the president of the Russian Federation from traveling to your country, this is a very aggressive and hostile act. Uh, president Putin has now banned a raft of top American politicians from uh, traveling uh, to uh, the Russian Federation territory, and uh, he's quite right to do so. I myself would go much further. If I was President Putin, I would tell these people threatening me with sanctions to go and get lost, or words to that effect. I'd tell them, if uh, you want to take sanctions against us, we'll take sanctions against you. And incidentally, I'd be reviewing 
the supply of gas uh, to the European Union. More than a third of the gas of the European Union is coming directly from Russia, and yet the European Union is taking a more and more hostile stand towards Russia. I'd be saying to Western companies, if you want to do business in Russia, which is a huge and booming market, uh, I don't think that that can be business as usual, as long as your governments are putting sanctions on us. I think we have to uh, face these people toughly. That would be what I'd be saying if I was in President Putin's office. Let's see what Frank in Yorkshire thinks of the matter. Frank, welcome to the show. Hello, George. How are you, man? By the grace of God, I'm good, Frank. Go on. Uh, you're looking well. <laughs> Thank you, brother. A bit fat, if you ask me, but there you go. That's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll go on a diet right listen. after the show. Uh, now, listen, terrorism. The last time I talked about this, you shot me down, and I don't know why you've done it. You know, you have to get Probably because I disagreed with you. That's my job. Go ahead. Uh, well, listen, terrorism really doesn't exist. It exists because the Western world has created it. When you got 9-11, yeah, right. The West created this thing called terrorism. It's um, the Rothschilds. Look at the Rothschilds. Look what about the Rothschilds? Why are you people obsessed by the Rothschilds? I've never understood it. Don't you know how corrupt they are? Well, I don't think they're any more corrupt than any other banker. All they're all right, corrupt. Then. All the bankers are corrupt. Whether they're called Smith, whether they're called Macpherson, or whether they're called Rothschild. Why do you single out people called Rothschild? I've never understood it. Let's single out the Queen of England. What? Let's single out the Queen of England. You can speak about the Queen of England. Go ahead. Yeah, she's corrupt as well. Listen, in what way, in what way is the Queen of England corrupt? George, every bloodline think they rule the world. You know what I mean? Well, I'm every against bloodlines. Bloodline I, I, Frank, I'm against bloodlines. I'm against royal you families. I'm you against kings and queens. But you just made a statement that the Queen of England is corrupt. And I'm asking you to justify it. Go ahead. Right, every, every U.S. president has got a bloodline to the Queen of England. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're talking nonsense. You're a, you're a, you're a, just a fantasist, Frank. It's better if you don't come back. Abdul Majid is in Mombasa, in Kenya. Let's hear from him. Abdul Majid, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mr. George. Good evening to you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to talk about Russia and this America. You know, Russia done a good faith to take uh, Crimea, to put it in its position. Mm -hmm. And this... Uh, John well, the Kerry Crimean tell, uh, people decided, told... didn't they, Abdul Majid? Yes, uh, Crimea people want Russia to, to, uh, to be on the side. Yeah, they are Russian they people. The, with the fascists. They are yeah, Russian. Because they are Russian, I know. They were for I centuries a part of Russia. But me, I comment about this. John Kerry told the Russian they are thieves. They grab the land. They are not the thieves. They are thieves. The, the, the Israeli, the big thief, grabbing the uh, Palestinian land. Yeah. And they are, uh, America's and, uh, done a fair bit of thieving in its time also, Abdul Majid. After Come all... Again? I'm saying America's done a fair bit of thieving in its time also. Yes, yes, it's time off. Now, now it's a new empire. I mean, the, the United States has a black president, according to the last yeah. nutter. He's, got a, he's connected by bloodline to the queen. But we'll pass over that. Oh. There are black people in America. Why, Abdul Majid? Because they were taken from Africa and chains as slaves. To serve the white settlers, to, the, the white European please, settlers. Promised to be given a bull, a 40 acre with a bull. The black people that be promised to be given 40 acre with a bull. Yeah. Instead, the instead they were worked Africa. as a bull. They were worked as a beast of burden by the white settlers in the so-called New World, which the white settlers had stolen from the indigenous people whom they massacred. Who are these American politicians trying to kid when they talk about people taking other people's land? As you say, Israel has taken all of Palestine, all of it, from the river to the sea, with American help 
American money, American weapons. How's that for an act of thieving? Yes, Mr. George, yes. They take some people land by force, uh, uh, violence with robbery. They use violence with robbery Indeed. To, uh, to steal people lands and their books. These Jews. So how Russia, do you think things Russian, will change uh, now after Crimea? How do you think things will change in the world? Uh, now is the time for Russia to be top. America is going down. And all the people that will start sidelining with the Russians. Uh, they leave America, they join Russia. And, and I'll tell Russia you something else. Let me add up. something else, Abdul Majid. I agree with you. It's time for Russia to stand tall, and I'm perfectly sure that they will. But it's time for China to stand beside them. Because if Russia is defeated, China will be next. Am I not right? There's these uh, people, they said, man, when the time king become a steward, steward become a king. Excellent. Thank you very much, my friend. I'm going to Cyprus next, from Kenya to Cyprus. Andreas is on the line, on Crimea. Go ahead, Andreas. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, George. Good evening, my sir. Go ahead. To the, my best wishes to the Iranian people. Thank you. It's a very important uh, occasion for the people of Iran and other countries because it's no rules. It's right. their New Year's Day, this very day. Very good. I, I'm just phoning about what happened uh, with Russia and uh, Crimea. Yeah. And I'm very, very, very disappointed with the response of President Obama and especially uh, Merkel, who I think um, has shown what they didn't expect. They stirred the trouble up in the U Ukraine. They didn't expect Russia, in my opinion, to do what Russia did. And now. They're looking to, well, for sanctions, which, of course, sanctions, what happens to sanctions is the poor people suffer. It's, it's not the politicians or the rich people who are going to suffer, it's the poor people. And I'm, just, uh, I'm very disappointed because if, when you watch television, you see what they do to the Palestinians and everything, which I'm very upset about. No one wants to help them. And all of a sudden, Crimea... Everyone, everybody in Europe and in America wants to help the Ukrainians and everything. Uh, what about the Palestinians? Exactly. Exactly. And where do we get the money, Andreas, to help the yeah. Ukrainians? Five billion dollars. Yeah. Five billion. B. The United States has put in to bring about this current state of affairs in Ukraine. But where did the European Union get billions to give Ukraine? When Cyprus was in trouble, when Greece was in trouble, when Portugal was in trouble, when Spain was in trouble, there was no money. But now there's money to give to Ukraine, which isn't even in the European Union. What do people in Cyprus say about that, Andreas? Uh, at the moment, George, at the moment, George, we are, we are getting strangled here. We are getting... Half the money we were getting before, everything's very tight here, and everything's very, very difficult in Cyprus. People don't realize how difficult that unemployment is very high here. And when you see all these billions going into Ukraine for political reasons, it makes you sick. Indeed, uh, it ought to. Andreas in Cyprus, thanks for that call. Off to Africa now. Talk to Maxwell in Zimbabwe. Maxwell, good evening. Welcome. Maxwell, are you on the air? Hello. You're on the air. Okay, hello? Yes, go on. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the Russia Crimea unification. Yes. Now, the, now, the story goes like this. Since um, most of the Crimean people voted for the unification with Russia, uh, no, and over one majority. More than more than ninety percent of them. Yes, and the majority agreed for the unification of Russia. Now the question is that: Why is the Western countries, the EU and Germany, imposing sanctions on Russia? When all the people in Crimea agreed on the unification of Russia. Well, look, Ukraine was uh, very precariously balanced country. 
47% yes. of the citizens of Ukraine were ethnic Russian, yes. Russian-speaking people. That meant 53 to 47. To govern a country like that, you have to be very careful. You have to balance the interests of both communities very carefully. You have to respect each other's community, each other's language. You have to have a government of national unity, uh, which has the, w the goodwill and the support of people from both communities. Once the coup d'etat in Kiev took place and the Russian language was cancelled as the first act of the new unelected coup government in Kiev, as soon as they cancelled the Russian language, this signaled to the ethnic Russian, Russian-speaking people in the Ukraine that the future was gone, going to be very, very difficult. So those who could, and Crimea could, because it was an autonomous republic within Ukraine, who could leave, have left. And the West has to get over it. It's a price paid because of their intervention with money and other things in the destabilization of the government of Ukraine and its replacement by an unelected coup government containing five, five open anti-Semitic fascists in the top positions in their government. So the people of Crimea could leave, did leave, get over it. That's the point. Ibrahim is in Nigeria. He wants to talk about Palestinian deaths. Do they matter in Europe? Ibrahim, welcome to the show, my friend. Ibrahim, are you there? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem as if Ibrahim is there. We were in Zimbabwe. We went to Nigeria, but we didn't get in. Let's try uh, for the next call. We're talking, uh, indeed, about Palestinian deaths, asking if they matter in Europe. It would appear that they don't. And we're asking, in the wake of Crimea and the decision of the Crimean people to seek reunification with Russia and Russia's decision to accept it, what will that mean for the world in the future? Behrouz is on the line. He's in Nottingham. Behrouz, welcome. Uh, um, hello, George. Yes, how are you? By the grace of God, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Definitely. Well, ba basically, I'd just like to talk about what's going on in Russia. It's sort mm. of basically carrying on some... I don't know if you remember, I, we were speaking a, a few weeks ago and we are talking about what's going on there. Just like I do, the, yeah, I remember well. Yeah, basically, the points I was making there at the time was um, what we saw was an attempted coup d'etat financed by the West, where they put all these uh, uh, fascist sympathizers in and whatnot yep. in an attempt to try and de put uh, smash the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which, of course, consists of Russia, China, and Iran. Mm -hmm. um, they want to put in regimes more hostile to them. I think you analyze it in the overall context. It's part of a long term plan that they've had to uh, destabilize Russia, of course. I mean, uh, you're sort of going back to the Georgia conflict, of course, in 2008, the mainstream media generally reported that it was uh, Putin who'd attacked, uh, was the main aggressors in said conflict, when in reality it was Georgia. The other way around, yeah. Yeah, Colin Powell even admitted as much. I think um, what we're seeing now, though, is uh, very much after w with um, Russia going into Crimea, you're seeing uh, uh, the decline of the West's power in many ways. I think you saw what happened in Syria. They were unable to get Bashir al-Assad out of power, of course. They were very much financing the death squad. The majority of the deaths in Syria, of course, were not Assad. It was not the Syrian army. It was very much um, the it was very much the death squad sort of financed by the West. The Frankfurter Zidane, which is a general well, uh, all, all, all the power that remains to the British government, Behrouz, is to stop Russian rich people shopping in Harrods. Leaves more room for the rest of us. Behrouz, you're a well-informed man, and that, as always, was an excellent call. I need to take a break for just three minutes, but I promise you, God willing, I'll be right back after a short news bulletin. So don't go away. Stay tuned for the second half of Comment. Coming back right after this.
Welcome back to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. I began the show and do again begin the second half of the show by wishing a happy Nowruz to all those in the dozens of countries around the world who celebrate this spring equinox as the beginning of a new year. The spring equinox is this day. That is to say the day and the night are from this day uh, on of equal length and of course a uh, very life-changing uh, occasion for so much of the environment in the world. A long winter we have again endured, those of us who have survived it, and today is the spring equinox. And for dozens of countries, Iran and many, many others, this is a, a very, very important festival and holiday. So uh, to all those who are celebrating it, I offer my congratulations. And we are talking about the current situation in Palestine. I have to put it this way. You may think they already long ago went mad. But the Zionist occupation army and their settlers that they protect are actually beginning to go insane. They are entirely out of control. Uh, this is the uh, funeral uh, of a little boy uh, murdered by them this week. And you can see the grief and consternation uh, amongst the population there, his family, his neighbors, his school friends, and the like. Uh, but when they're not killing them, they're torturing them. Uh, a very promising Palestinian footballer was taken by the so-called IDF, so-called Israel, so-called Defense Force, and shot four times in each foot so that he would never again kick a ball, never again be a footballer. These people are pure evil. These people are committing sins on a gargantuan scale. They are committing crimes on a gargantuan scale. The blood of Palestinian people is red, just like our blood. But that blood is undoubtedly cheaper. I asked the question earlier, if amongst the five million Scottish people, this kind of atrocity was being committed every day by a foreign occupying army, what kind of a story would that be in the world? And compare and contrast it with the kind of story it is in Europe and in North America because the victims are Arab and Muslim and Christian and Palestinian. Uh, that's one of our subjects. The other subject is Crimea and how the world has changed or if it has changed as a result of the events of the last few weeks in Ukraine, in Crimea and in Russia and in the attitude of the European Union and the uh, North American countries. Canada has been even more warlike uh, than America and Britain, which I'm sorry to say is the norm nowadays. And lastly, we're talking about the legacy of the late and great Right Honourable Tony Benn, the great Labour figure, 50 years a member of Parliament. He was in fact my character witness when I was expelled from Mr Tony Blair's Labour Party. Mr Benn came along and gave evidence in my support as did the late Mr. Foote, a former leader of the party, as did Tony Woodley, then the leader of the biggest union affiliated to the party. But the Blairites disregarded them all and booted me out. But it never separated me from Mr. Ben, with whom I marched in, uh, on all fronts uh, for 40 years. We're remembering the fantastic contribution that he made to British politics, to world politics. Who will ever forget Tony Benn on the BBC when the BBC shamefully refused to broadcast the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal for the Palestinians suffering and dying in Gaza. Mr. Benn went into the studio with the appeal, held it up, read it out himself, gave the phone number out live on television. God bless you. God have mercy on your soul. Tony Benn. Abdul in the UK is on the line about Crimea. 
Abdul, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, thank you, George. Uh, let me first uh, congratulate you on completing 300 shows, and I hope you go on for 300 more. God willing. Thank you very much, Abdul. Uh, yes, George. I mean, about the double standards, I think you're very right. I was just looking it up. You know, the Americans, they have this Monroe Doctrine from the 1850s. Uh, yes, good point. Good point. You know, and, and they consider the entire Latin America as their backyard. Mm -hmm. And no European power should interfere, apparently. And I think once in the 1860s, when France uh, invaded uh, Mexico, they sent troops and had uh, the French thrown out and some yeah. reacted to they them. They did the same in Cuba in 1899 yes, against, uh, against Spain. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why they weren't that keen on Margaret Thatcher uh, going all the way down to the Falklands, uh, because it was a breach of the Monroe Doctrine, uh, whereby they refuse any foreign intervention in their backyard, even though their backyard is thousands of miles long and wide. Sorry, Abdul, go ahead. Yeah, and they, they got uh, over that Monroe Doctrine by saying that, uh, you know, it was Argentina which, uh, which was the aggressor. So, you know, they, they don't need to protect Argentina. <laughs> yes. So, Although there were, uh, there were powerful voices in Reagan's White House uh, who he, said that the Americans should take the side of Argentina, which was, of course, led by a fascist military junta, uh, which had come to power with American support. That's true. And uh, even in the Iraq war, uh, war, I think they forced all these South American, Latin American countries to send troops because of the treaty, you know. And, uh, and uh, I mean, then they come to Ukraine, which is right next door to uh, Russia, uh, and Crimea, which was uh, initially belonged to the Tatar Khanate until it was captured by Catherine the Great. And since then it was with Russia, you know, and until... Um, they gave it away to Ukraine, a sister communist country. Um, so really, I mean, and Putin, uh, yes, I mean, uh, I was also among the people who cheered when, you know, the Soviet Union broke down and uh, what we got, we got George Bush and all that and the invas illegal invasion of Iraq. So I think it's good that Russia is becoming uh, stronger and yeah. it'll be a well, foil I, to I America. I told you you shouldn't have cheered, Abdul. But tell me this. How do you think it will change things now? How do you, what, what, what's going to happen as a result of the Crimean affair? Um, uh, one thing, let me know, I tell you, I mean, Putin, I mean, he belongs to the era of George Bush, Saddam Hussein, he's come back. He wants to uh, make uh, Russia again great and become somebody like, uh, you know, Peter the Great. But, you know, his hands are stained with blood from, of Muslims in Chechnya and he, I think he looks more like uh, Ivan the Terrible. So we need to see if he goes the way of uh, Putin the Great or Putin the Terrible. Okay. Uh, but way it goes, it's uh, good for Muslim countries, It'll, you know, that there's somebody who's a foil for American aggression. We, ha we, have, to see the, we have to see the big picture, uh, as you say, Abdul. We have to see the wood rather than have our view obscured by the trees. Thanks for that call. Amir Salam, always worth hearing, in Germany. Amir Salam, welcome. Go ahead, put your television down. Uh, peace be upon you, George. God's blessing and mercy. Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. In the name of God, the most compassionate and merciful. I briefly like to use the, this day in order to, to give a slight uh, side note. Uh, today, uh, May God reward you for your uh, information about the rules. Also, uh, according to a revelation from Imam Jafar, peace be upon him, today is the day when God uh, made the prayer obligatory for us as Muslims. So, uh, yeah, hopefully all of us will pray to our Creator. Thank you, sir. Um, coming to Russia. Um, yeah, um, the, the EU foreign ministers are putting more and more sanctions now on Russia and uh, give the reason that uh, the annexation of uh, Crimea is uh, uh, illegal under national law. Um, yes, they are right, but also the, uh, the, the Declaration of Independence from Kosovo back in 1999 was also illegal. So uh, um, this uh, gave Russia like the, the, the basis for, the, for, uh, for doing such a referendum. 
And uh, also, the, this is completely another situation because 97% uh, percent of the people on Crimea voted in favor of uh, joining Russia. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of Russian people and uh, we speak Russian. And, uh, yeah, in Kiev, uh, and, I mean, uh, uh, fascists took over now. And the first thing they do uh, was to abandon the Russian language. So uh, Russian, uh, Russia had no other choice. Than, uh, no choice. Uh, no choice at all. And uh, I just disagree yeah. with you on the issue of international law because uh, according to the Constitution of Ukraine, no part of the country could secede without a referendum of the whole country. But there are two caveats to that. First of all, Crimea was an autonomous republic within the Ukraine. And secondly, the constitution of Ukraine was torn up in the coup d'etat. It no longer existed. It was null and void. You can't say that a coup which burns down the presidency, burns a lot of police officers, drives the president from the country, forces members of parliament on pain of death. And I don't know if you saw uh, on television yesterday, the head of Ukrainian television being beaten to a pulp by fascists complaining that he was too pro-Russian in his coverage of the affairs in Ukraine. Oddly, I never saw that on the BBC or, or on Sky. You can't say that after all that, there is still a constitution that everyone has to obey. Once the constitution has been trashed, it's been trashed. And the autonomous republic of Crimea decided to leave. Its people endorsed it in overwhelming numbers. And Russia has accepted the return of Crimea, which was only given away by Russia in my own lifetime. And uh, that's not that long. Amir Salam, thank you very much indeed for that call from Germany. Faisal's on the line in London on the Palestinians. Faisal, welcome. Hello, George. How are you, George? By the grace of God, I'm good. Fire good. away. Go ahead, sir. Good, yeah. My condolences to Tony Ben's family and... May Thank you. May Thank you. God have mercy upon him. Peace, peace and happiness in the next world. Inshallah. Um, George, coming back to Crimea, uh, I mean, I was listening to that Nolan talking about how to fix um, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, the, the country with uh, people who are, you know, with guns and things like that. They wanted to have. Um, what you call it, these snipers and things like that. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have in a shot. But what, the other point I was going to say is the West doesn't mind when it suits them to ha give independence to countries um, like Falklands. Then, um, um, uh, well, that's right. Faisal, we had a referendum in the Falklands yeah. last that, year, that was last year that was ex that was of 2,300 British settlers. settlers yeah. And we were asked to accept this as a legal and binding decision yeah. uh, in relation to the Falklands. Yeah, but they don't want to have it. But what, what about the people in the Diego Gracia? They didn't have any... They didn't get a referendum. They were just deported. Yeah. And are living in the south of England as yeah. refugees. So where is their freedom? Where is their opportunities to... Their country was given to the United States as a yeah. military base. Uh, all they told these people was the country was going to sink. Yes. So they, they, they've taken that part of the world over. Uh, and coming back to Israel, I mean, when Saddam broke the rules of the United Nations, they said he has broken it so many times, that's why we are going to invade. But Israel has broken every United Nations um, uh, requirement that nobody seems to do, want to do anything about it. Well, that's the, that's the uh, nub of the problem, uh, Faisal. That there's one law for Israel and another law for everyone else, yeah. and especially for Muslim countries. Yeah. I mean, look at the situation on the nuclear front. Iran has no nuclear weapons, yeah. is a signatory of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, does allow the IAEA regularly to inspect 
its yeah. facilities and mm. its country. Yeah. Israel has hundreds mm. of illegal, undeclared nuclear mm. weapons, yeah. refuses to sign the non-proliferation treaty and would never dream of allowing an international inspector into their country. Yet one of those countries, the one that has no nuclear weapons, is regularly sanctioned and threatened. And the other, which has the nuclear weapons, is rewarded. Rewarded. See, but the, 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 the other thing is also, George, I have also found that whenever it suits the West, they will help out. There are other countries that had take Sri Lanka, take other countries that have had criminal problems, they pick these leaders up and they say they have no human rights. They, 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 they penalize these people without knowing both sides of the story. Yes, hypocrites, not Democrats, that's what yeah. they are. Faisal, thanks for that call. I've got to go to Libya and okay. talk to Abdullah about Crimea. Abdullah, welcome to the show. Abdullah. Yeah, you. Salam alaikum, brother. Welcome. Go yes, ahead. Please, um, first of all, good evening. Go ahead, sir. Okay, first of all, I want to condolence you with your friend, David. Thank you. He was a very great man. Yeah. He cannot be replaced yeah. easily. Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay, and secondly, I want to congratulate you with your for your 300 and something episode. Since the program was invented me for everything, since the first day, I remember this program, the first day I watched him in comment, uh, the same day, it reminded me a lot about the program. So definitely, I'm speaking like congratulations with you for that. And all the staff who have been doing a great job to make people to know the truth. Well, thanks, Abdullah. Okay. I, I, I really appreciate that. It's not a great line. Uh, so I'll press on. I, I just want to make this point that Press TV has given me this platform, 301 shows, by the grace of God, not yet out. And we are telling the truth, giving voice to the voiceless all over the world. Just this evening, we've had calls from all over Africa and Europe. Who knows who's coming up next? could be North America, could be Australia. And Press TV has done that in the teeth of unremitting subversion by the so-called free governments of the Western world who've taken our license, who've knocked us off the air and off the satellite, but we have kept going. Thanks to Iran, Press TV has kept going. And now we're coming back on satellite after satellite. And those in the United Kingdom should be making it clear to Ofcom that you demand our return to the Sky platform from which we were unfairly banished. Farah is on the line in Somalia. Farah, welcome to the show. Turn your television down, sister. Ah uh, yes, uh, sorry, it's actually Abdul Rizak. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, like it's been misdescribed on the screen. Please forgive me. Go ahead. Yes, not a, pro not a problem. I just want to make a comment on the Palestinian issue. My question is to is that what is wrong with the, uh, the Muslim leaders? Why are they not doing anything about it? The Arabs, the Africans, the Muslim leaders in the world, why are they just watching uh, Israel killing this? innocent people every day shutting down the energy sources and just you know blocking the only the bridge way that they have to Egypt why are the Muslim leaders just watching and not doing anything about it can you elaborate on that please well Farah it's worse than that most of them are doing nothing about it some of them are actively collaborating in it some of them have open legal legal relations with the apartheid Zionist state which is carrying out the atrocities that we've just been watching. Others have secret relations with the apartheid Zionist state and the best of them are doing virtually nothing or nothing at all except 
They are ready to fight a jihad in an Arab country. They are ready to shed the blood of a hundred thousand people in an Arab country. They are ready to pay for the gathering of hundreds of thousands of foreign jihadists to fight in an Arab country. You really couldn't make it up, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Abdul Razak is in Somalia also. No, we've lost him. Niall in Dublin is up next. Niall, go ahead. Niall, are you there? I am indeed, George. Good evening to you, brother. Good evening to you. Welcome back, Niall. Go ahead. Okay, George. Um, I'm just looking at the, the whole issue re in relation to the Crimea, and it's truly, truly bizarre uh, what's going on out there. You know, George, listening to uh, Angela Merkel over the last two days, you'd swear that there has been an outbreak of historical revisionism in Germany. Uh, Indeed. A dangerous, George, a dangerous place for that to happen, Niall. Absolutely, George. You know, absolutely. You know, and uh, like 70 years after, nearly 69 years after the end of the Second World War, uh, we now have the, uh, the modern state of Germany rushing uh, to the aid of uh, neo-Nazis. Uh, they're, they're, they're very, very same neo-Nazis, George, um, who slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Poles, uh, Russians and Jews in the Second World War. You know, it's, it's truly, truly bizarre, we, to be honest with you, George, you know, because it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, you know. You know, in my travels, George, I've been to the Ukraine, you know, I've been to Russia, I've also been to Belarus, and um, I, in my time there, you know, I met uh, Red Army veterans and Jews as well who, who suffered under the Nazis. Mm. And uh, here we have the likes of Svoboda, uh, who are in government in Kiev. Uh, they have six uh, ministers in their, in their government, in, in the current so-called government in Kiev, right? And this is the same party. Uh, which has an information house called the Joseph Goebbels uh, Centre. And uh, this is also a political party that describes the Holocaust as, as a great time, a great period. And yet, Niall, Israel is fully supporting this coup in the Ukraine, which is led by, and the sharp edge of, is provided by, openly anti-Semitic Nazis who worshipped Hitler and Goebbels and the rest. And the British and European leaders are giving them billions of dollars of our money. And let me say in the few seconds left to me now, a period of historical humility would be in order for the Federal Republic of Germany, which in the lifetime of people still alive today marched its jackboots all over Russia and all over Ukraine and all over Poland and elsewhere. God willing, see you next week. the whole issue in relation to the Crimea and it's truly, truly bizarre uh, what's going on out there. You know, George, listening to uh, Angela Merkel over the last two days, you'd swear that there has been an outbreak of historical revisionism in Germany. Uh, Indeed. A dangerous, George, a dangerous place for that to happen, Niall. Absolutely, George. You know, absolutely. You know, and uh, like 70 years after, nearly 69 years after the end of the Second World War, uh, we now have the, uh, the modern state of Germany rushing uh, to the aid of uh, neo-Nazis. Uh, they're, they're, they're very, very same neo-Nazis, George, um, who slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Poles, uh, Russians and Jews in the Second World War. You know, it's, it's truly, truly bizarre, to be honest with you, George, you know, because it's, 
it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, you know. You know, in my travels, George, I've been to the Ukraine, you know, I've been to Russia, I've also been to Belarus, and um, I, in my time there, you know, I met uh, Red Army veterans and Jews as well who, who suffered under the Nazis. Mm. And uh, here we have the likes of Svoboda, uh, who are in government in Kiev. Uh, they have six uh, ministers in their, in their government, in, in the current so-called government in Kiev, right? And this is the same party uh, which has an information house called the Joseph Goebbels uh, Centre. And uh, this is also a political party that describes the Holocaust as at a great time, a great period. And yet, Niall, Israel is fully supporting this coup in the Ukraine, which is led by, and the sharp edge of, is provided by openly anti-Semitic Nazis who worshipped Hitler and Goebbels and the rest. And the British and European leaders are giving them billions of dollars of our money. And let me say in the few seconds left to me now, a period of historical humility would be in order for the Federal Republic of Germany, which in the lifetime of people still alive today, marched its jackboots all over Russia and all over Ukraine and all over Poland and elsewhere. God willing, see you next week. Thank you. God have mercy upon him. Peace, peace and happiness in the next world. Inshallah. Um, George, coming back to Crimea, uh, I mean, I was listening to that Nolan talking about how to fix, um, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, the, the country with uh, people who are, you know, with guns and things like that. They wanted to have, um, what you call it, these snipers and things like that. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have in the shot. But what, the other point I was going to say is the West doesn't mind when it suits them to ha give independence to countries um, like Falklands. Then, um, um, uh, well, that's right. Faisal, we had a referendum in the Falklands yeah. last that, year, that was last year that was that was of 2,300 British settlers. settlers yeah. And we were asked to accept this as a legal and binding decision yeah. Uh, in relation to the Falklands. Yeah, but they don't want to have it. But what, what about the people in the Diego Gracia? They didn't have any... They didn't get a referendum. They were just deported. Yeah. And are living in the south of England as yeah. refugees. So where is their freedom? Where is their opportunities to... Their country was given to the United States as a yeah. military base. And uh, all they told these people was the country was going to sink. Yes. So they, they, they're taking that part of the world over. Uh, and coming back to Israel, I mean, when Saddam broke the rules of the United Nations, they said he has broken it so many times, that's why we are going to invade. But Israel has broken every United Nations um, uh, requirements that nobody seems to do, want to do anything about it. Well, that's the, that's the uh, nub of the problem. Uh, Faisal, that there's one law for Israel and another law for everyone else, yeah. and especially for Muslim countries. Yeah. I mean, look at the situation on the nuclear front. Iran has no nuclear weapons, yeah. is a signatory of the non-proliferation treaty, okay. does allow the IAEA regularly to inspect its yeah. facilities and mm. its country. Yeah. Israel has hundreds yeah. of illegal, undeclared nuclear yeah. weapons, yeah. refuses to sign the non-proliferation treaty, and would never dream of allowing an international inspector yeah. into but, their country. Yet one of those countries 
the one that has no nuclear weapons is regularly sanctioned and threatened, yeah. and the other, which has the nuclear weapons, is yeah. rewarded. Rewarded. See, but the, 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 the other thing is also, George, I have also found that... Billions to give Ukraine. When Cyprus was in trouble, when Greece was in trouble, when Portugal was in trouble, when Spain was in trouble, there was no money. But now there's money to give to Ukraine, which isn't even in the European Union. What do people in Cyprus say about that, Andreas? Uh, at the moment, George, at the moment, George, we are we are getting strangled here. We are getting half the money we were getting before. Everything is very tight here, and everything is very, very difficult in Cyprus. People don't realise how difficult that unemployment is. Very high here, and when you see all these billions going to Ukraine for political reasons, it makes you sick. Indeed, uh, it ought to. Andreas in Cyprus, thanks for that call. Off to Africa now. Talk to Maxwell in Zimbabwe. Maxwell, good evening. Welcome. Maxwell, are you on the air? Hello. You're on the air. Okay, hello? Yes, go on. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the Russia Crimea unification. Yes. Now, the, now, the story goes like this. Since um, most of the Kremlin people voted for the unification with Russia. Uh, no, and overwhelmingly. The majority, uh, more than 90% uh, more than of them. Yes, and the majority agreed for the unification of Russia. Now, the question is that, why is the Western countries, the EU and Germany, imposing sanctions on Russia when all the people in Ukraine agreed on the unification of Russia? Well, look, Ukraine was uh, very precariously balanced country. 47% yes. of the citizens of Ukraine were ethnic Russian, yes. Russian-speaking people. That meant 53 to 47. To govern a country like that, you have to be very careful. You have to balance the interests of both communities very carefully. You have to respect each other's community, each other's language. You have to have a government of national unity, uh, which has the, w the goodwill and the support of people from both communities. Once the coup d'etat in Kiev took place and the Russian language was cancelled as the first act of the new unelected coup government in Kiev, as soon as they cancelled the Russian language, this signaled to the ethnic Russian, Russian-speaking people in the Ukraine that the future was go going to be very, very difficult. So... Th uh, their backyard, mm -hmm. and no European co power should interfere, apparently. And I think once in the 1860s, when France uh, invaded uh, Mexico, they sent troops and had uh, the French thrown out and some yeah. reacted to they them. They did the same in Cuba in 1899 yes, uh, against, uh, against Spain. War. It's one of the reasons why they weren't that keen on Margaret Thatcher uh, going all the way down to the Falklands uh, because it was a breach of the Monroe Doctrine uh, whereby they refuse any foreign intervention in their backyard, even though their backyard is thousands of miles long and wide. Sorry, Abdul, go ahead. Yeah, and they, they got uh, over that Monroe Doctrine by saying that, uh, you know, it was Argentina which, uh, which was the aggressor. So, you know, they, they don't need to protect Argentina. <laughs> yes. So, Although there were, uh, there were powerful voices in Reagan's White House uh, who he, said that the Americans should take the side of Argentina, which was, of course, led by a fascist military junta, uh, which had come to power with American support. That's true. And uh, even in the Iraq war, uh, war, I think they forced all these South American, Latin American countries to send troops because of the treaty, you know. And, uh, and uh, I mean, then they come to Ukraine, which is right next door to uh, Russia uh, and Crimea, which was uh, initially belonged to the Tatar Khanate until it was captured by Catherine the Great. And since 
than it was with Russia, you know, and until um, they gave it away to Ukraine, a sister communist country. Um, so really, I mean, and Putin, uh, yes, I mean, uh, I was also among the people who cheered when, you know, the Soviet Union broke down and uh, what we got, we got George Bush and all that and the invas illegal invasion of Iraq. So I think it's good that Russia is becoming uh, stronger and yeah. it will be a well, foil I, to America. I told you you shouldn't have cheered, Abdul. But tell me this, how do you think it will change things now? How do you, what, what, what's going to happen as a result? of the Crimean affair? Um, uh, one thing, let me know, I tell you, I mean, Putin, I mean, he belongs to the era of George Bush, Saddam Hussein, he's come back. He wants to uh, make uh, Russia again great and become somebody like, uh, you know, Peter the Great. But, you know, his hands are stained with blood from, of Muslims in Chechnya. And he, I think he looks more like uh, Ivan the Terrible. So we need to see if he goes the way of uh, Putin the Great or Putin the Terrible. Okay. Uh, but way it goes, it's uh, good for Muslim countries, It'll, you know, that there's somebody who's a foil for American aggression. We, ha we have to see the... Welcome to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV. And happy no rose to all our viewers from all of us here at Press TV. We are here for Comment now for the next hour or so. Comment is the big conversation. It can be the great debate, but only if you join in. That's why, above all, I need your telephone calls on 442086014555. You call us, we'll call you back. Establish a clear line. And remember, if you got on the TV with me, your TV has to be down at zero or I'll have to pass swiftly on because no one will understand either of us. You can also SMS the show on 447800008066 or you can email me at comment at prestv.co.uk. Well, the Cold War that John McCain and John Kerry and... Barack Obama want to drag us back into just got a little chillier as President Obama and the White House announced a raft of new sanctions against the Russian Federation and the European Union foreign ministers arrived in Brussels, that uh, center of freedom and liberty, uh, to plan ever more draconian action against Russia. And the proximate cause, of course, is the situation in Crimea. Though that's not the real cause. The real cause is Western concern about the rise of new power in the world, about the fact that Russia has dragged itself off its knees to which it was reduced in the Yeltsin era and has, through its democratically elected government, given the Russian people back a great deal of their self-respect and a good deal, but not yet enough of the wealth that was stolen from Russia during the Yeltsin period. And the plutocrats and uh, uh, oligarchs that the Western countries are uh, threatening now with the purloining of their bank balances held in Western banks, more fool them for having their wealth in Western banks. President Putin told them more than a year ago to bring their wealth home. It shouldn't be in foreign banks, shouldn't be in foreign football teams, shouldn't... Turn your television down, sister. Uh, yes, uh, sorry, it's actually under with that. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, it's been misdescribed comment. on the screen. Please forgive me. Go ahead. Yes. Not a, pro not a problem. I just want to make a comment on the Palestinian issue. My question is to this, that what is wrong with the, uh, the Muslim leaders? Why are they not doing anything about it? The Arabs, the Africans, the Muslim leaders in the world, why are they just watching uh, Israel killing these innocent people every day, shutting down the energy sources, 
and just you know blocking the only the bridge way that they have to Egypt. Why are the Muslim leaders just watching and not doing anything about it? Can you elaborate on that, please? Well, Farah, it's worse than that. Most of them are doing nothing about it. Some of them are actively collaborating in it. Some of them have open, legal, legal relations with the apartheid Zionist state, which is carrying out the atrocities that we've just been watching. Others have secret relations with the apartheid Zionist state. And the best of them are doing virtually nothing or nothing at all. Except they are ready to fight a jihad in an Arab country. They are ready to shed the blood of a hundred thousand people in an Arab country. They are ready to pay for the gathering of hundreds of thousands of foreign jihadists to fight in an Arab country. You really couldn't make it up, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Abdul Razak is in Somalia also. No, we've lost him. Niall in Dublin is up next. Niall, go ahead. Niall, are you there? I am indeed, George. Good evening to you, brother. Good evening to you. Welcome back, Niall. Go ahead. OK, George, um, I'm just looking at the, the whole issue re in relation to the Crimea, and it's truly, truly bizarre uh, what's going on out there. You know, George, listening to uh, Angela Merkel over the last two days, you'd swear that there has been an outbreak of historical revisionism in Germany. Uh, Indeed. A dangerous, course, a dangerous place for that to happen, Niall. Absolutely, George. You know, absolutely. You know, and uh, like 70 years after, nearly 69 years after the end of the Second World War, uh, we now have the, uh, the modern state of Germany rushing uh, to the aid of uh, neo-Nazis. Uh, they're, they're, they're very, very same neo-Nazis. And that becomes the cause for war and confrontation. There are many other comparisons I can give. I will do later in the course of this debate. The second topic we are discussing is Palestinian deaths, which are now occurring amongst a very small population. The number of Palestinian people living in the West Bank, Gaza, and occupied Jerusalem is very, very small. It's less than five million. But every single day, Palestinians are being killed by the Zionist apartheid state. And the world doesn't even report it. Never mind, do anything about it. Now, Palestine, West Bank, Gaza, occupied Jerusalem, has the same population as Scotland. Can you imagine if every day a foreign occupier was killing people in Scotland every single day, as well as starving them, as well as building illegal settlements upon their land, as well as throttling them, torturing them, imprisoning them in huge numbers for political offences. Can you imagine the cause celebra that that would be in the world? And yet, it's happening to Palestinians every day, and Europe doesn't do a thing about it. On the contrary, Europe treats the criminal as if it were the victim, and treats the victims as if they were the criminals. And that's adding considerable insult to very considerable injury. The teams from Israel participate in the European football championships. They even get to sing in the Eurovision Song Contest, though maybe that's some kind of punishment, but it definitely doesn't fit the crime. The European Union, which is busy lecturing Russia over Crimea, where not a life was lost at the hands of any Russian, are doing nothing, indeed helping, the ongoing attrition, massacre, and repression of the Palestinian people. Discuss. And lastly, we have unfortunately seen the passing from this life of the very great and right honorable Tony Benn.
I was with him for 40 years, and I was by his side during some of his most epic battles, particularly his struggle to win the leadership of the Labour Party and make it a real Labour Party, a socialist party that would transform the lives of working people. They matter in Europe. It would appear that they don't. And we're asking in the wake of Crimea and the decision of the Crimean people to seek reunification with Russia and Russia's decision to accept it, what will that mean for the world in the future? Behruz is on the line. He's in Nottingham. Behruz, welcome. Uh, um, hello, George. Yes, how are you? By the grace of God, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Definitely. Well, ba basically, I'd just like to talk about what's going on in Russia. It's mm. sort of basically carrying on some... I don't know if you remember, I, we were speaking a, a few weeks ago and we are talking about what's going on there. Just like I do, yeah, I remember well. Yeah, basically the points I was making there at the time was um, what we saw was an attempted coup d'etat financed by the West where they put all these uh, uh, fascist sympathizers in and whatnot yep. in an attempt to try and de put uh, smash the Shanghai Corporation Organization, which of course consists of Russia, China and Iran. Mm -hmm. um, they want to put in regimes more hostile to them. I think you analyze it in the overall context. It's part of a long-term plan that they've had to uh, destabilize Russia, of course. I mean, uh, you're sort of going back to the Georgia conflict, of course, in 2008, the mainstream media generally reported that it was uh, Putin who'd attacked, uh, was the main aggressors in said conflict, when in reality it was Georgia. The other way around, uh, yeah. Yeah, Colin Powell even admitted as much. I think um, what we're seeing now, though, is uh, very much after w with um, Russia going into Crimea, you're seeing uh, uh, the decline of the West's power in many ways. I think you saw what happened in Syria. They were unable to get Bashir al-Assad out of power, of course. They were very much financing the death squad. The majority of the deaths in Syria, of course, were not Assad. It was not the Syrian army. It was very much um, the it was very much the death squads that were financed by the West. The Frankfurter Zidane, which is a well, uh, all, all, all the power that remains to the British government, Behruz, is to stop Russian rich people shopping in Harrods. Leaves more room for the rest of us. Behruz, you're a well-informed man, and that, as always, was an excellent call. I need to take a break for just three minutes, but I promise you, God willing, I'll be right back after a short news bulletin. So don't go away. Stay tuned for the second half of Comet coming back right after this. Welcome back to Comment with me, George Galloway, here on Press TV, still the voice of the voiceless. I began the things like that. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have in the shot. But what, the other point I was going to say is the West doesn't mind when it suits them to ha give independence to countries um, like Falklands. Then, um, um, uh, well, that's right. Faisal, we had a referendum in the Falklands. Yeah. Last that, year. That was last year. That was, that was of 2,300. British settlers, settlers yeah. and we were asked to accept this as a legal and binding decision yeah. uh, in relation to the Falklands. Yeah, but they don't want to have it. But what, what about the people in the Diego Gracia? They didn't have any They didn't get a referendum. They were just deported. Yeah. And are living in the south of England as yeah. refugees. Mm -hmm. Where is their freedom? Where is their opportunities to... Their country was given to the United States as a yeah. military base. Uh, all they told these people was the country was going to sink. Yes. So they, they, they've taken that part of the world over. Uh, and coming back to Israel, I mean, when Saddam broke the rules of the United Nations, they said he has broken it so many times, that's why we are going to invade. But Israel has broken every... United Nations um, uh, requirements that nobody seems to do, want to do anything about it. Well, that's the, that's the uh, nub of the problem, uh, Faisal. That there's one law for Israel and another law for everyone else. Yes. And especially for Muslim countries. Yeah. 
I mean, look at the situation on the nuclear front. Iran has no nuclear weapons, yeah. is a signatory of the non-proliferation treaty, does allow the IAEA regularly to inspect yeah. its facilities and yeah. its country. Yeah. Israel has hundreds yeah. of illegal, undeclared nuclear yeah. weapons, yeah. refuses to sign the non-proliferation treaty and would never dream of allowing an international inspector into their country. Yet one of those countries, the one that has no nuclear weapons, is regularly sanctioned and threatened. And the other, which has the nuclear weapons, is rewarded. Rewarded. See, but the, the, the other thing is also, George, I have also found that whenever it suits the West, they will help out. There are other countries that had take Sri Lanka, take other countries that have had criminal problems, they pick these leaders up and they say they have no human rights. They, 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 they penalize these people without knowing both sides of the story. Yes, hypocrites, not Democrats. That's what yeah. they are. Faisal, thanks for that call. I've got to go to Libya and okay. talk to Abdullah about Crimea. Abdullah, what? Very disappointed with the response of President Obama and especially uh, Merkel, who I think um, has shown what they didn't expect. They stirred the trouble up in the U Ukraine. They didn't expect Russia, in my opinion, to do what Russia did. And now they're looking to well, for sanctions, which, of course, sanctions, what happens to sanctions is the poor people suffer. It's, it's not the politicians or the rich people who are going to suffer, it's the poor people. And I'm just, uh, I'm very disappointed because and when you watch television, you see what they do to the Palestinians and everything, which I'm very upset about. No one wants to help them. And all of a sudden, Crimea, everyone, do, everybody in Europe and in America wants to help the Ukrainians and everything. Uh, what about the Palestinians? Exactly. Exactly. And where do we get the money, Andreas? to help the yeah. Ukrainians. Five billion dollars, yeah. five billion B. The United States has put in to bring about this current state of affairs in Ukraine. But where did the European Union get billions to give Ukraine? When Cyprus was in trouble, when Greece was in trouble, when Portugal was in trouble, when Spain was in trouble, there was no money. But now there's money to give to Ukraine, which isn't even in the European Union. What do people in Cyprus say about that, Andreas? Uh, at the moment, George, at the moment, George, we are we are getting strangled here. We are getting half the money we were getting before. Everything's very tight here, and everything's very very difficult in Cyprus. People don't realize how difficult the unemployment is. Very high here, and when you see all these billions going to Ukraine for political reasons, it makes you sick. Indeed, uh, it ought to. Andreas in Cyprus, thanks for that call. Off to Africa now, talk to Maxwell in Zimbabwe. Maxwell, good evening, welcome. Maxwell, are you on the air? Hello. You're on the air. Okay, hello? Yes, go on. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the uh, Russia Crimea unification. Yes. Now, the, now the story goes like this: since um, most of the Crimean people voted for the unification with Russia, uh, no, overwhelmingly, the majority, right? more than more than ninety percent uh, of them. Yes, and the majority agreed for the unification with Russia. Now, the question is that, why is the Western country uh, on of equal length and, of course, a uh, very life-changing uh, occasion for so much of the environment in the world? A long winter we have again endured, those of us who have survived it, and today is the spring equinox. And for dozens of countries, Iran and many, many others, this is a, a very, very important festival and holiday. So uh, to all those who are celebrating it, I offer my congratulations. 
And we are talking about the current situation in Palestine. I have to put it this way. You may think they already long ago went mad. But the Zionist occupation army and their settlers that they protect are actually beginning to go insane. They are entirely out of control. Uh, this is the uh, funeral uh, of a little boy uh, murdered by them this week. And you can see the grief and consternation uh, amongst the population there, his family, his neighbors, his school friends, and the like. Uh, but when they're not killing them, they're torturing them. Uh, a very promising Palestinian footballer was taken by the so-called IDF, so-called Israel, so-called Defense Force, and shot four times in each foot so that he would never again kick a ball, never again be a footballer. These people are pure evil. These people are committing sins on a gargantuan scale. They are committing crimes on a gargantuan scale. The blood of Palestinian people is red, just like our blood. But that blood is undoubtedly cheaper. I asked the question earlier, if amongst the five million Scottish people this kind of atrocity was being committed every day by a foreign occupying army, what kind of a story would that be in the world? And compare and contrast it with the kind of story it is in Europe and in North America because the victims are Arab and Muslim and Christian and Palestinian. Uh, that's one of our subjects. The other subject is Crimea and how the world has changed, or if it has changed, as a result of the events of the last few weeks in Ukraine, in Crimea, and in Russia, and in the attitude of the European Union and the uh, North American countries. Canada has been even more warlike uh, than America 